Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide, 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we are on page number. 606 please turn to it it's 606 if at, if at the end of the video you find this helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me you can always get hold of me by sending me an email at kishwani prep at icloud.com let's take a look at number first first problem number the very first problem on page number 606 is number 20 number 20 tells us something about the heating cost you can read the problem yourself as a which is why I always tell you that you must have the book in front of you. Read the problem yourself and you will find that the heating cost, whatever the cost is, the regular cost, is $4,334 per year. And they want to install some sort of a efficient energy system. Uh, homeowner plans to spend $25,000 to a geoth geothermal energy system and if they do that they have, they have, they have, they have concluded they have, they have figures that if they do that their cost per year for heating will drop from $4,300 to $2,712 the initial investment We are told that they would have to invest $25,000 up front uh, to make the switch. The question simply is how many years will it take before they see any return on their investment. The number of years it takes, which means the, the total savings that they have, total savings they're going to have is the regular amount that they would have spent $4,334 minus the $2,712. This is the savings they're going to have per year times the number of years, which we're, we're going to represent with T for the time period. And as long as this amount, this is the total savings, this is their total savings. And as long as the total savings is more than this guy here, 25K, they're in business. The question is, how many years does it take before this happens? And luckily we don't actually have to solve for it, we just have to identify the correct inequality and that, that is the correct inequality. And that happens to be answer choice B. Make sure that you do not pick A because the way I wrote it, it may look like the answer choice is A, but in the A, the inequality sign is reversed. Because they put $20,000 $20, $20, here, so it's going to be $25,000 has to be less than this guy right here, 4334 minus 2712 times T and there is us twice B. Just pay attention, that's all it is. It's just pay attention that as long as the initial cost is less than what they save, this is what they save eventually, as long as the initial cost is less than what they save, they're in business. And the question is how long does it take before that happens? And for that you solve for T. Number 21. That is what is known as the break-even point. They're trying to figure out the break-even point. The, the number of years it takes before they break even with the cost. Number 21. We are told that the line of best fit, best fit is this. The question is, what is the interpretation of the slope. What is the interpretation of the slope in the context of the problem? And again, I'm going to leave that up to you to do that, to figure out what is going on, because there's a lot of reading there. And if you read all of this thing, you'll find that what the slope tells us, what the slope tells us is, slope tells us, slope indicates the average, average increase in the amount of plastic produced each year. 
It is not the total production, this is the average production. Each year, the X will represent the year, every year, every year, whatever the amount that you produced last year, we started out with the 47 billion tons of plastic, whatever it was, and then after that it goes up by approximately 3.4 billion tons of plastic is added uh, to the total. This is the average increase, and that corresponds to answer choice D. Answer choice D is the only one that makes sense there. That was number 21. Let's look at 22. Because what I found is that if I stand here and read everything here, it takes forever to do the problems. Number 22. It says the closest percentage increase in billions of pounds of plastic is the same, same, same continuation, same graph as you can see there from 2000 to 2003. Now what the graph tells us, again, if you, if you read the whole thing yourself properly, what it tells us on the x-axis is the number of years, number of years since 1985. Since we're looking for number of years, since x-axis shows us the number of years since 1985, and if you want to compare 2000 to 2003, for 2000 you're going to have to look at the period 15, because 15 plus 85 will give us 2000. So if you do that, for the 15th period, if you look at the graph carefully, you will see the, you will see the reading for 2000 is 100. It's very simple. And similarly, here, for 2003, the T would have to be 18. 2003 happens 18 years after 1985. And again, if you look at the graph carefully, it's just a matter of reading the graph. There's nothing to it. Just take your time and read the graph carefully, and you will see that for 2003, is approximately 110. And the closest percentage increase is a very straightforward, very simple problem. It couldn't be any more simpler. Because what they're basically asking us is that what is the percentage increase going from 100 to 110? Well, obviously, it's 10%. There's, not, there's nothing to it, there is no calculation. The answer is A. The answer is A. Percentage increase is 10%. Number 23. Twenty-three. Twenty-three is a little tricky. Twenty-three is a little tricky, but I'm going to share with you what I what I do, which always works. What happens sometimes is that what happens sometimes is that a function is given to us in a certain time period for a certain time period, let's say per year, or per decade, or per week function may be given to you in terms of per week and they want us they want you to rewrite that function in terms of per day or if it's given in terms of per hour and you want to you have to rewrite this function in terms of per minute you get the idea here this t represents the year t represents the year and they want us to write the same function what it does what, what it what it's doing and what it's measuring we are not interested in it but of course you can read the problem yourself and you will see that we are apparently trying to measure we are to, apparently trying to measure the number of people who are member of a certain gym. And here it is being measured in terms of year. What they are asking here is that what would the equation look like if we were to depict the same, same data but not in terms of year but in terms of quarters. They want us to rewrite this thing in terms of quarters. And here is the trick. The trick is very simple. You rewrite what is given to us, rewrite the exact same thing, don't change anything here. And there are and there are there are four quarters in a year. That's not a big secret. Everybody knows that. There are four quarters in a year. The question is what do I do? Do I do do I do Q over four? Or or do I do or do I do this? 
because there are four quarters in a year. Those are the only two possibilities. The other two choices that they give us, the other two choices that they give us, they are purely nonsensical. They, they don't make any sense. It's either this, four times Q, or Q over four. Well, here's the trick. Here's the trick. If it is four over four times Q, then if I want to find out how many members I have in the club, in the gym rather, how many members do I have in the gym at the end of fourth quarter, I would put a four here at the end of fourth quarter. And we will end up with 1.02 over six, raised to 16. But if you were to do the same work in terms of years, if you would do the same thing in, in terms of years, instead of saying how many members do I have in the gym at the end of the fourth quarter, instead of saying that, if I were to ask you how many members do I have in the gym at the end of the first year, you would put one here. And one, as you can clearly see, one does not equal 16. Therefore, it is not 4Q. Therefore, it is not 4Q. It is Q over 4. The correct formation is Q over 4. Because now, if you want to figure out how many members do I have at the end of the fourth quarter, you will replace the Q. You will replace the Q with a 4. And 4 over 4 is 1. And that's exactly what you will find for the number of members at the end of the first year. Raised to 1. There you go. And therefore the correct answer here is A. That's all it is. And that always works whether you want to replace in terms of uh, whether you want to uh, switch from weeks to day or hours to minutes or years to decade, whatever it is. Just do a simple trick. Whatever information that you know for a fact is true, in which, in which case, in this case we know this is true at the end of first year it should be one here, that we know for a fact at the end of one year it should be one here, but then that should also work out to be one. And if it works out to be one, then you're fine. Number 24. In number 24 we are told that uh, whoever gets more than 50% Whoever gets more than 50% wins. And here's what we are told. We are told that 10% of the viewers, let me put that here, 10% of the viewers I cannot write Apparently there was some show and the viewers were invited to vote at the end of the show to decide which consistent contestant wins. And if 100 people watched the TV show, 90 people did not bother to uh, call in to vote, only 10% did. And of those 10% who voted, we are told that 30% voted by social media and 70% by text. They were given two choices. They can either send a text message or they can go on one of the social media websites and vote over there. And that was the split 3070. Let's carry on. We were told that people who voted by social media, people who voted by social media, of those people, of those people, 70% voted for Contestant number two. If seventy percent voted for contestant number two, then thirty percent must have voted for one. Even though they do not actually say that, but in the problem they do tell us that there are only two contestants. So if seventy percent of the people who voted by social media voted for guy number two, then the remaining thirty percent must have voted for guy number one. Let's carry on. We're taking too long here. Of those people who voted by a text message, of those people. 40% voted for number 2, contestant number 2, which means the remaining 60%, 60% of the people who, of those people, of those people who voted by text message, of those people, 60% must have voted for number 1. Enough said. The question is, based on these facts that are presented to us, 
given the four statements that are there, which one will make will make a reasonable conclusion? Now here, the thing here, I always, I'm going to tell you exactly what I do here. The thing here is that before you look at the answer choices, because if you start reading the answer choices at this point, if you start reading the answer choices at this point, you're going to be very confused because your thinking is polluted, your thinking is contaminated. Don't do that. Draw your own conclusion first, draw your own inferences first. So let's do that. We're going to draw our own inference. This part, the fact that more than 50% wins, we don't really care. We also don't care this part. Let's draw our own inferences. Inferences, inferences that we should draw, inferences that we should draw is that the people, based on what is presented here, this part we're talking about here, people who vote or are voted by social media prefer guy number two. There you go. That is not, nobody is going to dispute with that because that's what we are told here. We are told here that all of the people who voted by social media, all of those people, even though only 30% voted by social media, but among those people who voted by social media, vast majority of them preferred guy number two. The people who voted by a text message, majority of them preferred guy number one. And those are facts. I'm not going to write the second part here, but those are facts. You can say that people who voted by a text message preferred guy number one. And those are two conclusions that nobody can dispute with. As you look at the answer choices, there are only four answer choices. You'll find that among the four answer choices, usually there are one or two that are just ridiculous. And you, you, usually we're down to two. So you just take your time and see which one is reasonable. Let's look at, I'm going to read them, to, no, I'm, not, I'm not going to write up obviously all of them because it will take forever. Let's read them together. Answer choice A says that two would have won if everybody voted. Because you know only 10% voted. Of every 100 people who watched the show, only 10% bothered to vote. Statement 1 claims that if everybody had voted, two would, have, two would have won. How do we know that? It's just bull crap. we don't know that. The second one says that the those who voted by social media were younger audience. There is nowhere in the whole story any mention of age. Age does not play any role here. There, there is, we can't say it. Age doesn't come into it. They, they make no mention of it. It plays no role. Answer choice C says that two would have won, two would have won if everybody had voted by social media. Because remember, in two, 70% of people who voted by social media voted for number two. So what this says is that if everybody had voted by social media, two would have won. That's nonsensical. That's pure nonsense. Just because you're told to vote by social media and you're told that you're not allowed to vote by text message, that's not going to induce you to say all of a sudden, oh, well, in that case, I prefer guy number two. I was going to prefer guy number one if I had sent text message, but since you're not allowing me a text message, I prefer guy number two. That doesn't happen. The people's preferences do not change just because you told them to vote by a certain way. C is pure nonsense. C is absolute nonsense. Answer choice D is exactly what we put here. This is exactly what answer choice D says. Answer choice D says, I'm going to read it to verbatim. It says here, the viewer voting by social media were more likely to prefer guy number two. That's all. That's exactly what it here. People who voted by social media were more likely to prefer guy number two. People who voted by text were more likely to prefer guy number one. The answer is D. We'll stop right here. We'll meet again tomorrow. We'll pick up from where we left off. In the meantime, if you want to get hold of me, you can reach me, as I said before, by sending me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright? Bye now.